what's up? How you doing today? We are going to take a look at some improv, you know, tactics we can use while playing over Santana's Evil Way. You just heard me play through an example with a backing track doing something called octaves, which we're going to get to a little bit later. But we're going to start even simpler than that, and we're just going to look at how to use the G blues scale over this and mostly focus on some different scale just kind of sounds and tones and stuff. So let's give another listen to me playing over uh, that same track with an example. Just focus on the G blues and listen to how that sounds and I'll show you what's going on and we'll keep building up from there. So this tune is just rocking out G minor to C for the outro section that normally in the studio tune just fades out, but I got a backing track that we can try out all this stuff along with uh, that really jams that part out, gives you a lot of time to, to, uh, to experiment around. And it's just G minor and C. And I'll just start off by saying we can just do the G blues scale, right? So that's what we just heard. And that gives you, uh, you know, gives you a certain kind of sound, kind of this, you know, real kind of cool, bluesy, of course, um, sound. And yeah, if you just kind of just grab a spot, you don't have to know it all over the neck, just grab one spot. And just kind of, you know, kind of really know it well and kind of learn how to come up with little melodies and express yourself. And that's all you need to really uh, to know to get through the tune. But let's now listen to an example of playing G Dorian. It's one of the modes uh, of the major scale. And then uh, we can listen to how that kind of sounds and gives you a, give a different kind of color. And I'll explain what's going on with that after. So G Dorian, if you don't know what that is, there's a few different ways of thinking about it. Uh, the easiest is to just think of it as the minor scale, but with a raised six. So if you go up, here's what they call flat six. So you're going up one, two, three, four, five, six, and you just raise it by one fret. You can always play it over here. I kind of prefer it. So it's a sweeter sounding minor scale. And uh, that just fits perfectly with the key. The overall key, you could think of it as, as F major, even though there's no F, um, but those are the notes of the uh, of what we're playing. And if you just focus on a G instead of an F, that gives you what the Dorian sound is. So it's kind of like uh, thinking of a major scale, but you focus on the second scale degree. So if you got F here. But anyways, for people that don't know this stuff, that's probably confusing, and I don't want to confuse anybody, and I don't want this to be a big theoretical thing. Just a more quick, practical lesson where you can kind of hear these uh, these different sounds these, and these different kind of colors and flavors, you know, if you will. So this is an option that works well, and especially for Santana, this is like his scale of choice by far. There's so many of his songs, probably the majority of them, revolve around a Dorian sound. It gives, it gives him a big part of what his sound is. So I was playing that up here and uh, the, the, all it is though compared to the uh, blue scales if you take out that blue note and you just have the G minor pentatonic if you add this note right here and that note right there so it's the second scale degree and the sixth scale degree, that raised six so you're just adding two notes in there those two notes add a lot of color especially that second he does that all that um, so, so try messing around with that stuff and adding it to your uh, repertoire if it's new to you. But let's listen to another example where we're doing the same thing, but we're focused on a certain technique to add a little more shape to it. Let's see if we can figure that out. this one I'm doing the same thing but I was just doing it up here so in this position here so it's kind of like playing your you know G minor pentatonic that uh, you know a lot of people are familiar with and adding those notes like this one here and this one here you can add this one again up here this same as that one 
But I was just bending a lot. So, you know, we're going to do a lot of stuff with notes here. Just don't forget that, you know, the notes are just notes. you got to really shape them and do it your own way to uh, make things sound, sound a lot better. Now, let's just jump right into the next one here. This is now using a different scale. It's using a D minor pentatonic to get some different sounds that are uh, not, not so uh, usual. But let's give a listen, and I'll explain what's going on with it after. If we were doing that same one we were just doing over here, do it down here. This is now D minor pentatonic. Here's our D, or here, here, here. Right? And now this works well if you're playing, okay, the G minor here. And, you know, I forgot to mention, too, we're going G minor to C. We're just, we're focused a lot on uh, just playing around the overall thing, playing around the G minor especially. And I'm not going to really get into any stuff about the C. We could do a lot of things with that, but it moves real quick, back and forth. So it really just kind of works easier to uh, just stick around thinking about the, the G minor. In this case, we're playing D minor over it. Like, what's going on with that? Well, a lot of these notes are shared. So you have this note is in the, uh, the chord. This is in the, the G minor chord. This note is just an extension that makes it a G minor seven, just a little jazzier. And then this note, and that's G, so that's obviously in there. And then this note is that note from the the Dorian scale I was talking about, that one of those extra notes. So it's not in the chord, but it gives this little extra uh, flavor. And then this note is now another note that's a little extra kind of flavor. And then you're back back to the beginning. This is the uh, the, the octave of that, that that first one, the D, right? So there's only those five notes. Because hence the name pentatonic scale. If you don't really, you know, if you don't know pent meaning you know the five, right? So this this note and this note, those are a little more out there. So it gives it a little more color, but it's just a different kind of way of thinking about it. It gives you different little shapes to be thinking about, you know, this shape rather than just thinking about the G minor. And it's a great way to get ideas and go back and forth. I wasn't doing it in my example, but, you know, you could go like, you know, G minor. And then switch to the... Um, to the uh, D minor and kind of go back and forth and it's like you can have these little conversations yourself and they they give you these different sounds but you're using the same uh, same shape. So let's get away from scales again for a second and listen to the guitar part at the end of what is the organ solo and listen to see how we can use it for our actual guitar solo. We'll see what's going on. This is that. So you have to even play it verbatim, but that's at the end of the organ solo. It's kind of like everybody's playing it. It hits. It's just the simple idea of playing this. It's the G minor chord, playing the G and the next two notes of the chord, and then up here, which is part of the C, but it works really well over the, the G as well. That just works great to, to, to have that into your solo. You don't want to be just thinking about scales or just stuff that maybe is not uh, connected to the tune. It may seem far removed. So this will bring you back and something that it's good to like maybe start your solo off or maybe at the end of the solo, you know, kind of bring it back. So it's like if you take a long solo, people might forget sometimes what's, what song is going on. You play the little, little uh, riff there. It brings you back to the tune, brings the listener back like, oh, yes. That evil ways. And you can always do it up an octave too, too. So way up here. But uh, let's listen to one more. Listen to those octaves we heard at the beginning. But give it another listen and I'll show you what's going on with that.
this is now taking, you can do the full Dorian, but we could even just do the uh, the G minor pentatonic, simplify it. And this is just playing in what they call octaves. If you don't know what that is, it's just playing the same note, but the next one up, up an octave, or you can think of it going down, however you want to think of that. And with these strings, it's going to be three frets apart. Same with these. But if you go over to these strings, it's two frets apart. Just the way the, uh, the guitar is, you know, tuned up and stuff. And you can think of it different ways. You can think of it focusing on the top one. I like to focus on the lower one just because it's kind of easier to see. So I think about, okay, if I'm going like this, here's G. See, I'm going around the scale like that. And I just put the shape on above it. And you can play it around there. And that's something that Santana did a lot. You know, in his uh, playing, sometimes very clean, sometimes uh, really distorted too. But it, it certainly can add a you know real kind of smooth sound to your playing when it's clean. But when you're you know, really ripping, it can uh, it can really add some some more energy and stuff. So those are just some ideas, just a kind of a you know big and quick overview of uh, stuff you could do over evil ways. And of course, you can do all this stuff over any time you get a progression like that, where it's a just a minor chord and goes up like that the major chord. So it doesn't have to be in this key, it doesn't have to be this tune, it could be up here. It could be A minor, just do everything then up uh, to two frets and then you got all that. A Dorian, same scale shapes, everything's the same, you know, octaves, all that stuff, of course, all the same. Um, it's just a matter of memorizing this stuff, getting it under your fingers and really getting to uh, say something with it yourself. And if you want to try it out yourself, I've got the backing track over here. You can just click on that link. It'll take you right to it. Grab a guitar and uh, have fun with it. And I'll hopefully see you in one of the next videos.